all this is Anjali and in this video I'm going to explain you how to use methods in Java like in some of the comments students have asked me to solve the questions where the board exam asks you to write a method to solve a particular problem before doing how to write a method first you should know what a method is method can also be called as a function so we call function or method it usually means the same thing so a method is basically a named group of statements which is used to perform a well-defined task. So for performing a task, I can define a method or a function which I can call any number of times in my program so that I should get the result for this. Now when you have to write a method, you have a proper syntax for that. First we need to mention the return type. So we need to mention what type of value is your method going to give. One method or function can give one value as a result. So that value should be of type integer, float, double, whatever type should be there. We have to mention it here. Then comes name of the method. So you have to give name of the method, which can be any name, but rules are there. Obviously, you can't use spaces and special symbols except underscore. So basically, the rules which we have for naming variables, we have the same rules for naming a method. Then in round brackets, we have list of arguments over here. So the values on which we have to work that we take over here. No semicolon at the end and in curly brackets you write down the code of the method till here. We have a special statement called return which is used to return the result from the function. So let's see how do we write it. We'll do some of the examples for this. For example, if the question asked is write a function in Java that takes an integer number as parameter and return its cube. Now the cube means the number raised to the power 3. So if I have to do that, if my number is an integer, so cube is also going to be an integer. So return type I take as int. Then I have to give name to the function. That's your choice, whatever name you want, if it is not mentioned in the question in the exam. But let's say cube is the matching one. So I take cube. Then I start round bracket. And then you have to name the parameter which you are receiving. So we are receiving one integer. That's why I write int a. A could be anything. I have given the name A. You can give X, N, Num, whatever you want. So whatever name you want to give here, you can give that. But the data type is integer and it's one value. Then you will start curly brackets on the next line. I need a variable to store the result. For that, let's say I take C. And then for finding cube, I have to multiply A three times. So I'm going to write A into A into A. So that I get cube of A in C. And that is what you have to return and I write return C. So that's it. So it's the same code which we used to do in normal Java programs, but you don't have that get text and set text lines here. Instead of get text, that variable we are taking here as parameter and instead of set text, you have to return C. Otherwise, the normal code would remain the same. So that's how we write a function. So this was one example. Another example could be Write a function in Java that takes two integer values as parameter and return their sum. Now, integer values sum would also be integer. So, return type is int and I give it a name as sum. And now I have to receive two parameters. Since I have to receive two, I have to write int a, comma int b. And do remember, you can't write int a, comma b when you're writing a function. So, normally we can declare multiple variables on one line, but here, when you receive them as parameter, you have to mention their data type separately. So I have to write int a, comma int b, or comma float c, whatever values you have, they have to be separated by commas and declared separately. Then starts curly bracket. I need to find the sum. So I take another variable where I should hold the sum. So write c is equal to a plus b, and then we return c. Simple, close the function. And this question generally comes for two marks. So two marks are yours once you write this. So this is how we can do. And when you write functions, you can use if, you can use loops, whatever you want to use inside the function. So when the question starts like write a function in Java that takes an integer number as parameter and you have to return its factorial. Now, factorial is when we multiply the number, like if you have to find factorial of 5, then we have to multiply 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So from that number till 1, we have to multiply all those numbers. Since we have to multiply in a series, I need to have a loop over here. 
So I'm going to take a variable for the loop and one variable where I'm going to store the result. I store, I initially take that variable as one since we're going to multiply. Now I need a loop. The loop should start from the number, should go till it is greater than or equal to one. Every time it should decrease by one. So every time it should decrease by one, what should it go do inside this? P is equal to P into A. That's it. Only this line has to be repeated. Once the loop is over, we return the value of P. Now, how is that working? I'll just show you here. Like initially, if I assume my N is 4, so this A is going to work for 4, 3, 2, and 1. So initially when A is 4, 4 greater than or equal to 1 is true. This statement will work as you have already practiced the output questions. So just try doing it once of your own so that you can understand. So P is 1, 1 into 4 is 4. P's new value becomes 4. It comes here. A minus minus makes it 3. 3 is greater than 1. So 4 into 3 becomes 12. Then A becomes 2. 2 greater than 1 is true. So 12 into 2 becomes 24. Then A becomes 1. 1 is equal to 1. 24 into 1 is 24. Then A becomes 0, condition is false, we come out and we return P, which is 24. That's the factorial of N. So that's how we can write this. And for this video, we'll be solving one more question. And that is, write a function in Java that takes an integer number as parameter and return its sum of digits. Now here I have to find sum, but not of multiple numbers. You have one number and inside that number we have digits. Like I have... Uh, digits of the like if my number is 387 so the digits are 3 8 and 7 so i have to find the sum of that so how do we find the sum how do we take out the digits for that i take a loop that loop says till my number is greater than zero what i have to do is i have to take out a digit and from a number how do you take out a digit when you multiply or when you divide it by 10 and take the remainder for example if the number is uh, let's say 345 so first time when I write 345 mod 10 mod 10 means remainder 10 so when we divide 345 by 10 we get 34 as quotient and 5 as remainder so remainder we have taken in D then whatever is the remainder that should be added to the sum so s is equal to s plus D sum we have taken initially 0 since sum is initially 0, 0 plus 5 makes it 5. And then I need to reduce my number by one digit. For that we write a is equal to a upon 10. When we write this, we are left with 34. Then it goes up here again. 34 greater than 0 is true. So 34 greater than 0 is true. And then if we find the remainder, we get 4. 34 mod 10. You add it to the sum, you get 9. And the number left is 3. Then it goes up here again. 3 is also greater than 0. Since 3 is greater than 0, 3 mod 10 will be 3. The remainder would be the number itself. And the sum becomes 12. And finally, the number becomes 0. When it goes up here at while, 0 greater than 0 is false. We stop. And when we come out of the loop, whatever is there in S, we have to return that. So that's your sum of digits. You don't have to write this in the exam. That means this numbers. These I just wrote to explain you how the code is working. But this is the code to find sum of digits of a number. So like this, a function or a method can be given for anything, anything to be calculated using if loops or just a simple formula. So you need to write the function name, the parameter, the return type, write the code and return the value. So that's how we solve the questions. I hope you understood this. If yes, if you really think that you're getting benefit out of the video, do click the like button and subscribe the channel for the new updates. And yes, for the solution for this file, which I have shown you in this, I'm going to add a link for this file in the description so you can download the file from there. So till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.